Hello everybody, uh, I'm Bishop Keith. Welcome to my journey through Holy Week. This year I thought I would do something a little bit different and do a series through the whole of Holy Week. The only problem was, where would I get some new different material with a different but important viewpoint? Luckily I came across the amazing writings of an Orthodox Jewish scholar, Amy Jill Levine. She is the New Testament and Jewish Studies Professor at Hartford International uh, University for Religion. She has held office in the Society of Biblical Literature and Catholic Biblical Association and the Association for Jewish Studies. She brings a unique perspective to the Gospels stories of Holy Week and it's to these observations that I am keen to reflect on and speak about in this most holy of weeks for the person who seeks to follow the teachings and the, uh, and, and the journey of Jesus. As you may know, the four Gospels give slightly different perspectives to the events of Holy Week, commencing, of course, with the events of Palm Sunday and culminating on the cross of Good Friday. Levine reminds us that we need to read these stories in the Gospels with compassion. What a great insight she brings already to that. We do need to read these stories with compassion, not just to flit over them as if they're just something that's so familiar to us. We, she is inviting us to dive deeply into these stories and to, com and to compassionately investigate what is Jesus on about in this amazing story of Holy Week. How much more meaningful can they become for us as, they tra as we traverse through this most important part of our Christian calendar? As we delve into these last days of Jesus, we need to find ways to understand and challenge our own lives, both as individuals and as communities of faith, as we look afresh at these stories of his trial and choices. The story of Holy Week is ultimately about risk. Levine notes that there is history as well, but from my reading, fresh through the encouragement of Levine, I see that it is a story of great risk. As we read through the story, we reflect on it, hopefully, we will see and rethink previously held views and even rethink how we as individuals and as communities of faith in the world we are called to be a part of, how we might do that anew. Jesus is about to give up his life. This requires us to reflect on what is a life worth? And in doing this reflection, we need to reflect and even determine what our own lives are worth. What is worth dying for? Probably the most important question, what is worth living for? How are our values and have we lived up to them? During Holy Week, we should ask ourselves, what should I have done that I did not do? What risk should I have taken that I was afraid to take? When did my sense of self-preservation trump my courage? During our reflection on Holy Week, we observe Jesus and the disciples. Who stands firm? Who runs? What happens when you run? What can we do when we fail ourselves, others, and probably most importantly, when we fail God? What does it mean to deny? To betray? To fall asleep when we should have acted? How do we rise again? These whole events of Holy Week are designed to move us emotionally in terms of our conscience. It means to move us from faith into action. If we accept risk, we can become better people. Jesus did all this in Holy Week, and so he asks us, his followers, to choose to make the right choices to take the risk, even if such decisions are difficult. I fear, though, that in our churches we have become so risk-averse, we have dulled our senses and our instincts, and in seeking to be safe churches, are designed for a slow, long, lingering death, from which there may or may not be resurrection, as was for the case in the churches in the book of Revelation. Of course, 
Jesus is not the only one who risks during this time. The woman who, 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 um, who anoints him, she risks. Will Jesus accept her gift of generosity? Which of course he does. But she also risks the criticism of her act of generous love, which, surprise, surprise, of course happens. She gets roundly criticized by the host, Simon. For the woman who comes to the tomb, for the women who come to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus, they risk, for they, seem, they seemingly minister to a person who has been put to death by Roman authorities. Another woman asks, risks by asking or by saying, I am a follower. Another acts on that identification. Just as an aside, it is interesting that when I ask the question, who runs and who stays, isn't it interesting? It's the men who run and the women stay. That surely needs further reflection. As I reflect on my own issue of risk, I see in my own situation the risk of doing what is right and making the right choices has consequences when there are forces at work that do not want to see the new direction or even the new possibilities or the new necessities that need to be followed to go in a certain direction. These days, a great risk is simply to say, I'm a follower of Jesus. Another risk is trying to make our churches a safe place for all people rather than a safe haven for those who only want people like themselves in church. Or to do mission that simply makes them feel good about themselves rather than actually bringing in new people to the church, as the risk is these new people might actually challenge the way we do church. And that is a risk that very few in our churches are willing to take. Another risk is for the church, how, is how we incorporate our LGBTQI community into our communities of faith in a, in a good way, in a safe way, recognizing them as people beloved by God and precious in the sight of God and reconciled to God through the cross of Christ. Risk comes with the danger of being misunderstood. Jesus understood this best of all. The disciples misunderstood Jesus. The Roman authorities misunderstood Jesus. And it will come as no surprise to any of us that we too misunderstand Jesus from time to time. We can often focus on aspects of Jesus' ministry that seem to validate our position. An overly simplistic example of, of this might be seeing Jesus selecting 12 male disciples, therefore supposedly excluding women from leadership in the church. It will come as no surprise, therefore, that there will be aspects of the passion story that have been misunderstood by us as individuals and as the church as a whole. And indeed, I have misunderstood, and I will highlight those as we go through the narrative. Ultimately, though, Holy Week challenges us in these ways. What do we stand for? What do we believe in? When we do stand up for those beliefs, when are we going to stand up for those beliefs? And in watching the disciples, we can ask, when have we denied or when have we betrayed? How do we make it right? Jesus takes up his cross in the Passion. Can we do the same? When a friend comes to us and asks us, what is the cross that you're bearing? What is the cause that you have taken up? How have you risked? Do you know what the answer is? This is the challenge to us of Holy Week. I do hope that you will join with me as we journey through this most exciting time in the Christian life. The Lord be with you.